Welcome to the Ministry's Papers. Today we're going to showcase Vanda's Hammer Hand. What's up, Miniatures Paint Brush Legion? This is Rob, your host, and here I'm going to talk about painting up the last model that I did when my computer was broken. My old computer was broken, for those that didn't realize. Uh, for a while there, my laptop had uh, broken, and I had all this time that I had to save up money so I can buy a new computer and all the pieces. And of course, I had to buy uh, a very high-end computer because that's what I really wanted to. So I saved up the money in order to do that. But while I was saving up the money and selling t-shirts for TMP and all uh, I had a couple of projects that I got completed and one of those projects was Van this Hammerhand and I'll tell you a pure joy to paint it was the largest Stormcast Eternal I have painted to date and also epic, an epic, epic ride. I really learned a lot while painting this model. I used techniques that I, I painted when I painted the uh, Night Titan and used some of the techniques and the shading techniques that I learned with that, as well as a free hand that I did on the cape. Um, I did that. And I learned it and it was a process and it was a lot of fun. Uh, my only regret is that I do not have a tutorial on Van This Hammer Hand for you guys uh, to see. But that doesn't mean that there aren't a lot of Stormcast Eternals that I have uh, to still paint. So it doesn't mean you're not gonna see some large Stormcast Eternals get painted up on the channel. It's just that you're not gonna see Van This Hammer Hand get painted up on the channel. So, Enough of me blabbering, let's get on to the showcase. So yeah, Vandis Hammerhand, let me tell you, uh, wow. <laughs> it was so satisfying to get him complete. He was the last person for my Stormcast Eternals project that I had to do, uh, which was the start uh, starter box for Age of Sigmar AOS 1, which I had lying around for a very, very long time. And... I didn't, I never decided on what color scheme I wanted to paint them until I just, you know, settled on to the Celestial Vindicators theme. And it was really, it was fun to paint because it was very satisfying at the end when I was done and uh, like I had a lot of ideas that I would have wanted to incorporate on this model. Uh, one of the ideas that I wanted to do, I wanted, I knew I wanted to do a uh, blue-gray um, chest piece and lower end piece and going into that dark uh, blue dracolith skin on the top. I wanted to do some glowing eye effects with some OSL, uh, and I wanted to have, like, if you look directly inside his mouth, it's a little more red, almost like he's uh, breathed some kind of uh, a breath attack right there that I really wanted to add to it. And on the back of the model there, you're gonna notice that there is a hammer uh, and some lightning bolts going in there. That pattern is freehand, and that was uh, inspired by uh, Vince Ventrola's Dark Oath Seeker, where he also has on the back of his cape uh, this, like, like uh, imagery for uh, skulls and stuff like that but mine I wanted to make a hammer so I just went to it and I did my uh, non-metallic metal gold uh, sheen onto it so I just really wanted to push myself in that aspect with this model because with every model I try to push at least one aspect um, one of the things I also did uh, was that I actually rolled out this base um, using a, a rolling pin uh, straight on the base itself. It was like the first time I ever did this. Um, and it, it came out really well. I really enjoyed painting up this model. I um, I did Celestial Vindicators, although he is a um, he is you know a hammer anvils of uh, of Sigmar. He is um, the leader of that. But I, I did him I did him in the Celestial Vindicators uh, mode because well because I felt like it basically. Um, and some aspect of it. I mean I could also say that with a little bit of his lore I can tie it into it as well but one of the things is I just wanted to you know have cohesiveness in my army and I wanted to paint the celestial vindicators to the entire army so that's what I'm gonna do all right so next up let's talk a little bit about the lore now that we talked about painting him and the project and how wonderful it was um, Van this hammer 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 hand uh, he was formerly Vendel Blackfist of the dryer 
dire band tribe and he was the first to lead the stormcast eternals into battle when uh sigmar opened its gates and ending the age of chaos for those that people who don't play aos uh the world was in chaos when uh sigmar closed his doors for everyone else because he knew that chaos was just gonna win and he just you know shut himself off from everyone else pretty much damning everyone else in the world and universe and he developed a plan. He wanted to get back at Chaos, so he's been forging these warriors uh, for the entire Age of Chaos, where Chaos just like really completely demolished the land. Partially, that's where uh, Flesh Eater Courts actually started out from because of the dire need for food, and people started becoming cannibals, and it was it was something else. But so when he finally opened up his doors and he led his attack against Chaos. It was Vanis Hammerhand that led the attack against Corvus Call at first initial battle in Aquishi, uh, in the Realm of Fire. And, you know, he's pretty iconic. He's iconic uh, not just uh, as a fig, but he's also iconic with all of the Stormcast Eternals of being the lead, the first person to go in, and the hero, right? Um, so he was also, since he was the first person out, he was the most that kept on showing signs when he was killed and was reforged. Stormcast Eternals, when they die, they get shot up back into their realm and then they get reforged or remade and they get put back into the battlefield. But the thing is, is that the effects of reforging didn't show, uh, except for Venice Hammerhand, he started just being off. And what happens is, they start, uh, the Stormcast Eternals start losing their humanity and become more of a automaton. In other words, they just follow orders. Uh, they don't have that empathy, the sympathy. Uh, their human side is just taken away. Uh, for example, they become more law. Uh, if you ever play D&D &D, uh, in the realm of, you know, a law and order, in the realm of order there, you have... Um, everyone following the letter to the extreme and any infraction is heavily weighed upon. Now, think about this. Uh, if a human is starving, right, and they take one apple from a cart, it is stealing, but it's feeding their family, um, and you had enough money to pay for this kid's uh, apple, um, you know, at first, you would just, you know, get the apple for the kid. Well, you know, and that's it, right? I mean, most people that I know would. <laughs> anyway, but, um, you know, after a while of reforging, you lose that, and you're like, oh, you stole, you broke the law, okay, I'm gonna take this hammer and smash your head in. Like, <laughs> extreme, ending the, the kid's life. Like, that. There's the extreme of law, you know, right there. So he started to lose his humanity a little more and a little more. In fact, uh, the book, First Mark, with Neve Black Talon and her story about her first mark, they refer to Vanda's Hammerhand as, oh, him. As in, everybody knows he's a hero. He's very much respected. He very much is an icon. But at the same time, everyone very much knows that he is also the flag bearer, the, the, the epitome or the, the icon of what happens to Stormcast Eternals as they continue to fight and continue to die on the field. And, you know, an inevitability that they're going to lose who they are as people um, after a while of being reforged. So he is a symbol of both. It was once hope, but now it's turned into almost dread. But at the same time, he's accomplished. Vandis has accomplished so much, people still respect him. So it's really interesting, um, his story right there. And it encapsulates a lot of the Stormcast Eternals and how they feel and how they approach battle now and how things have changed. The... Uh, Sigmar actually sent out uh, a warband into uh, Underworld, uh, Shadespire and uh, the like, and to find out, you know, like, if, is there a secret in the city of Shadespire that can help them with the reforging process so that people don't lose uh, their humanity? The Stormcast Eternals do not lose their humanity anymore when they're reforged. So, uh, you know, Sigmar is actually actively trying to solve this is issue. So it all revolves around Vandis. I mean, he's such a key, iconic character. Um, now, as far as gaming, Vandis is actually armed with Heldenson, and he is astride 
Kaldanax, his Dragolith. And let's get into uh, his statistics for those of you who do play uh, and do not run any of these uh, Stormcast Eternals or are unfamiliar with Stormcast Eternals. Vandis Hammerham has a movement of 10 inches. He has seven wounds, uh, three up save, and a bravery of nine, right? So it's him and his mount, that, a mount and that's why uh, the movement is 10. His Heldensen has a range of two, has three attacks, three up to hit, two up to wound, minus one rend, and three damage. So it is really a powerful weapon. But what actually makes it even more powerful is that with the Heldensen, you add three, D3 to the attack characteristics of Heldensen if the model made a charge move in the same turn. So if they're making that charge move and they're attacking, then you're adding a D3 <laughs> to the amount of attacks that you can do. So this really makes it like a really powerful weapon. Um, he also has the ability Intolerable Damage. And if the unmodified wound roll for an attack is made with the Dracolith, uh, Claws and Fangs, and it's a six, uh, that attack uh, damage characteristic of a D6 instead of just one. In other words, the claws and fangs of his Dracolith, Kalanax, right, has a range of one, attacks are four, you have three up to hit, three up to wound, minus one ren and one damage, but if he lands on a six, it's a D6 damage. So potentially you're doing six damage on this if all goes right. All right. And if all goes uh, wrong, you're still doing the one damage characteristic that you have. Uh, as well, so it's it's just all good. All right, so let's talk about storm breath. Now the Dracolith has a storm breath. Uh, in your shooting phase, you can pick a point on the battlefield within 12 inches of this model visible to them. Roll a dice for each enemy unit within two inches of that point, and on a four up, that unit suffers D3 mortal wounds. So it's basically a, like a blast template. That's what you're doing. If you're playing 40K, it's a blast template. You know, you have that two inches, although they don't actually have blast templates anymore. But basically, um, Lord of the Hammer Hands, uh, friendly hammers of Sigmar units wholly within 24 inches of this model at the start of the battle shock phase do not take battle shock tests. So it's like, you know, feel no fear uh, or immune to battle shock. You know, there you go. If you're wholly within 24 inches of this model. All right, the command ability is the Vengeful Domination, and you can use the command ability at the start of the combat phase. If you do so until the end of the phase, add one to the attack characteristics of me melee weapons used by friendly hammers of Sigmar units if they are wholly within 12 inches of the friendly model, which has this command ability. So any units that are wholly within 12 inches of this model, you're gonna get that, uh, you gotta add one to your attack rolls and it's all gravy. Really a great model to have in your army and if you are just a plain, I mean, if you're just like in it for the modeling, uh, it's a great uh, model to build and paint. It really does come alive. I would have to recommend this one thing. Um, be careful with the cloak because the cloak actually comes in uh, two pieces. So. Actually, what I did was is that I painted it separately and then attached it in at the end and then painted over the pieces that I actually attached. Um, I am not 100% happy with that and that's really, really rough. It's making me a little bit nervous when I approach Mortarian when I paint him because I hear that his cloak is in several different pieces. So yeah, I really have to figure out a way that I can actually glaze over, paint over uh, that area where I'm satisfied and it doesn't leave any kind of indentation. So that's the only gripe that I would have about this model. Um, so, but other than that, the painting aspect of it, everything just is such a dynamic model. I really loved it and such a powerhouse on the battlefield that, you know, it's hard to go wrong with this one. All right, let's check out the outro. Well, there you have it, all painted up and ready for an AOS battle report. Well, if you like this showcase, like, share, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you next time on the Miniatures Paintbrush.